Hi guys, you think I'm weird? Really? Yes, I am. Okay, welcome back to this channel where we talk about electronics, technology, 3D printer, Arduino, ESP8266, ESP32, LEDs, print circuit board, SMD technology, and so on. As you can see, I'm addicted to 7-segment display with corner LEDs. I've built all kind of them, large display like this, medium size like this or magnetic like this one and even mechanical one using servo motor each of these built using a 3D printer and WS2812B LEDs but listen to me today in this video I build the smallest colored LED display in the world yeah! isn't really small and it's made with new pixel LED. You can change each segment color. You can create clock, counter, everything you want. So guys, watch the video until the end and you'll see what an adventure it was to make this project. And let me know what you think by writing a comment. And if you like the video, please leave me a like, which is important for the growth of the channel. I start, as always, by using Fusion 360 to model the mini display enclosure. So the container will be made of black PLA and the segments will be made of white PLA with a thickness of 0.58 mm. I want to be able to build a display with a very low thickness and the printer circuit board attached to the back. I insert the LED and build a space around the segment to allow each pair of LED to diffuse the light only in its own segment. Finally, I add the rendering of the printed circuit board made in KiCad to verify that everything is correct. I add two connectors and I'm done designing the container. If you enjoy the project you find in my playlist, I invite you to consider joining the community of channel supporters. This way you will be able to see the new content in advance and browse the backstage and preparatory phases of each video like the one you will see today. Building a video is an incredible adventure. I use KiCad to draw the circuit diagram. I add the WS2812-2020 LEDs and connect them in the right sequence via the signal input and output pins and for each LED I connect the plus 5V and the GND. I add a capacitor between positive and negative and two 3-pin connector for input and output LED signal. Then I move on to the placement of the LED using the segment drawing that I imported from Fusion 360 as a reference. I pay attention to placing all the LEDs in the correct direction. Using the green square that is present on the LED and on the components silk screen. I also added these two arrows that indicate the input and the output of the signal. Then I create a copper plane for the plus 5 volt on the SMD size and the tracks that connect the LED signal. On the opposite side, instead, I create a ground copper plane. And this is the final 3D result. And now all I have to do is send the files to PCBWay to create the printed circuit board. PCB Ways offer the best custom PCB prototyping service, but they also offer injection molding, 3D printing laser, and CNC cutting with their instant quote feature. You can simply upload your model 
and choose from SLA, FDM and SLM, which is a laser mounting a metal powder to make metal parts. They also have an instant quote feature for their custom PCB. So go ahead and try it right now at the PCBWay.com. In a few days I received the double side printed circuit boards with matte black solder mask and the stencil to apply the solder paste on the SMD pads. It arrived well packaged and protected. Now it's time to print the box. I think it would be interesting for someone to see how I did print the white segment inside the black container having a printer that only prints one color at a time. It's important to generate the output file from Fusion 360 in 3MF format. I use the Prusa Slicer. By importing the 3MF file into Prusa Slicer, here on the right you can see that I can assign a different extruder to each object. I assign all segments to extrusion 2 which will correspond to the white color, while the rest of the container to extruder 1 which will correspond to the black color. Now I generate the G-code output file and edit it with a text editor. I look inside the file for the T1 tool and replace it with a pause command and I use a macro called Cambiophilo. Then I look for the T0 and replace it again with a pause command. Now let's start the printer. At the end of the first black part, I replaced the filament with a white color and restart the print. Once the white segments are finished, again I replace the white filament with a black one and continue printing till the end. Now I'm ready to apply the solar pasta on the SMT pads. I made a template to keep the PCB stable while applying the solder paste. This way I can apply the solder paste on PCB, then remove it and move on to the next one.
I center the stencil as precisely as possible on the SMD pads. I use a solder pad for SMT that contain the flux inside. With a spatula, I apply the solder pad on the stencil. The first result is not very good, so let's try with a second PCB. Let's consider, however, that we do not have professional tools for applying the solder pad. This time the result is better. Even if the solder pads cover two adjacent pads, we will see later that in soldering this will not be a problem. Now, thanks to Link Micro Microscope, we are going to analyze the pads and the solder pad. I have to place the SMD LEDs on the PCB. Look how small these LEDs are, practically microscopic. And now you can see very well the green sign that indicates the mounting direction of the LED on the PCB. and the green sign correspond to the sign on the silk screen of each LED. As soon as the solder pad reaches the melting temperature, the LED self centers perfectly. Now we just have to solder the two connectors and assemble the display. And this tiny display is ready to be used in your projects. I used my Arduino library to manage four display and create a multicolor clock that update automatically when connected to the internet. <laughs> 